Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of Saturday Night Special. And I've got several things to share with you in uh, this week's video I think you might like. We've got, I've got some new acquisitions, some stuff I've been picking up. I've got a little bit of machine work mixed in there. I had a little sleeve that I had to uh, make for a, a guy here in town. Uh, so we got that. And then also I do a little bit of uh, uh, heating and straightening of my trailer ramp. So capture a little video of that we're going to throw in there. But um, here recently, I, I went over to Mobile and picked up an Oliver drill grinder that I bought from Andrew over at Blacksmith Tools. This is one that he had already um, made a deal on when we were out at Long Machine Tool. And whenever I found out about it, he offered to sell it to me and, and I, wanted to, I wanted to buy it and add it to the shop here. So we got some video of that, uh, picking it up, getting it over here and unloaded and we'll talk more about the that grinder what its capabilities of in the in the video and then uh, just today I actually went back over there because I had when I was over in Texas when we visited uh, A&E Machine and Gear Mike is the owner there we were checking everything out and he had these huge slabs of steel outside and uh, Andrew and I made a deal with him to buy all those that I, I bought one of them Andrew got the others so Andrew was kind enough to uh, go pick all those up and then he took mine and uh, Created it for me and shipped it over here and I, I went and picked that up. So we got a little video of that, of uh, getting it off the truck today and getting it, you know, set down on the ground. So I think you might like the mix up for this week. And uh, I've, got a, I've got a meet and greet announcement that I want to tell you guys about as well. So next month, February, is going to be the, uh, the big event for, for the uh, Florida Flywheelers. And that's going to be going on. Uh, February the 19th through the 22nd. So it runs from a Wednesday to a Saturday. It's a it's a four day event. So I plan on being there the first day, February the 19th, on a Wednesday, and we're gonna have a uh, a little YouTuber meet and greet there at the machine shop on the uh, the Flywheelers property, and also uh, Dave Richards from Old Steam Power Machine Shop. He's gonna be there. And Keith Rucker said that he's going to be there. And also Jim Bollinger from Do Right Fab, uh, he's going to be there as well. Those are the only guys that I've talked to that confirmed that they're going to be there. There very well may be some other guys that, that end up wanting to come and, uh, and hang out there. So we're all going to be gathering probably, uh, I'm saying somewhere between 1 and 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We'll start getting together there and, uh, you know, have our little, you know, hangout and meet up there. You know, until whenever. I just figured that would give everybody time to uh, be able to check out the swap meet and then maybe go have some lunch and then after that go over to the machine shop and check that out. So it's an it's an awesome event. I encourage everybody to come down and, and check it out. It's it's a huge swap meet plus lots of tractors and heavy equipment. Uh, the big snow steam engine there. They've got another uh, building there with all kinds of like big Ingersoll Rand type diesel engines in there that, that run. So they also got a little village there too as well. It's really neat to see. Rent you a golf cart and uh, ride around and you know have a have a lot of fun there. So anyway, I just wanted to invite all my viewers and anybody that you know is wanting to come out to the event. We're we're going to be you know getting together there at the machine shop and uh, having a little meet and greet. So anybody wants to come on out, come and uh, hang out and talk with us. All right. So uh, February the nineteenth, Florida Flywheelers. Maybe we'll see you there. These are my two ramps that I built for my trailer way back whenever I built my my uh, my big trailer, and you see what's going on with them. They are um, they're bent, and they've been in this condition for a number of years now. And really, really, what I want to do is just uh, rebuild. I just want to build new ramps for the trailer. But for the time being, what I was going to try to do was uh, maybe see if I can straighten them. I was going to do some heating and a beating and see if I can get them kind of straight and, and uh, use them to help unload the shaper off of the trailer. So that's what we're going to attempt today. And uh, what had happened is th th this is not my doing right here. Uh, somebody was using the trailer a while back and apparently they were trying to load a gigantic tractor onto the trailer that was like 15,000 pounds. I had no idea and they were using my ramps to load that try to load that tractor up on it and of course it bent the ramps so I use these ramps to uh, load my Malibu countless times 
uh, a few trucks, my mom's Tahoe once, and uh, I even loaded a tractor on it that I had borrowed a long time ago onto the trailer. And these ramps always worked for normal loads, but that's what they were built for. They were not built for a 15,000 pound tractor. And whenever they went to drive up on there, you can see what it did. They just, they bent. And then this one's even worse right here. You can see how that one, that one got. So, and this is usually what happens whenever you let somebody bar your trailers is that they, they mess stuff up, they damage them. People usually don't care about trailers because they're just like, oh, it's just a trailer, who cares? It's just a metal, you know? But that's not how I treat my stuff. I treat my stuff with care and that's one of the reasons why I want to uh, get my trailer reconditioned and uh, I'm gonna I'm probably just gonna rebuild these probably use some thicker gauge angle iron whenever I do these but anyway we'll get them clamped out here on the table we'll use a rosebud probably do some heating and see if I can get them kind of straightened up so that they're not so bad alrighty does that on me.
It's looking pretty good. I may do a little bit more heating and uh, painting on the sides with the hammer to kind of get the sides a little more straight. And I wanted to point up, point out that uh, these C-clamps, these, these right here are like some of the ones that I pick up at the flea market for like $2 a piece. They're not the, my best ones and I use them, I'll use them and abuse them. They're not my best C-clamp. So I don't mind messing these up if they, they're gonna get heat all over them or, or whatever, you know, so. Um, that's that's what I wanted to point out about those. But anyway, real happy. It's uh, starting to straighten up. It's definitely working. Trying to rain on me. I got a rain cloud coming in on me. The weight of the wrench on there made it fall down <coughs> once I heated it up. Yeah. It's a lot straighter than it was. New machine day, guys. I just uh, got back from Mobile over at the YRC terminal and I picked up this new to me Oliver drill grinder. This is a machine that I purchased from Andrew Alexander at Blacksmith Tools and we recently showed on SNS 286 part two of one of these drill grinders actually being used over at A&E Machine and Gear. Uh, Micah, he's the owner. He actually has one of these at his shop and we and he uh, gave a demonstration on how it works. But when I was visiting with Andrew over at his shop, we went down to, uh, I believe it's Ferris, a long machine tool and uh he actually had this up on the shelf and andrew already knew about it and already had made a deal wanting to buy this drill grinder and uh, andrew told me about it and offered to sell it to me and after seeing how the thing worked over at a and e i decided i i wanted to have one for myself so it was just an opportunity it was a uh, purchase of opportunity at the time being able to get one so it, i believe the machine is Fully functional and intact, all except for this uh, one section right here, the casting that was broke off and that was already done that way. This It was bought this way and I bought it knowing that it had this crack. But other than that, I believe the rest of the machine is, is good and complete. Andrew actually showed a video on his Instagram of this thing running. Pretty cool. It'll actually hold up to a three inch drill bit in here and grind drills. All my straps are doing good. You see, I got my sling protectors on here to protect the slings around the sharp edges of the machine. And here's our business end right there. Here's the fixture and then the, the wheel. And I, I have never run one of these, so I'm looking forward to actually getting it set up and learning how it operates. 
it does a really good job of grinding drill bits. You don't have to uh, grind one flute and flip it around. This is uh, fully automatic. You stick the drill in there, once everything is set, it, it grinds both flutes at the same time. It, it spins and grinds both flutes. So when you take it out of there, the, the, uh, the, the drill is ready to, to uh, drill, do its thing. We got some, uh, got some work going on across the street there. The uh, neighbors there having some trees cut. So you got the tree service out there cutting those big live oaks. I think they're trimming it because I remember he said that he's getting a new roof on. So I don't know what all they're, if they're just wanting to clean it up or they're having to remove some trees, but that's what all the noise out here is. So anyway, I'll get the uh, pallet jack out here. This always works real well for me. I took the tailgate off before I get over there or before I leave so that I don't have to worry about taking it off. Forklift can load it, push it up on here, and all I gotta do is just bring my pallet jack and uh, with the ramp hooked up, I can slide right on off onto the, to the pad there. Okay, we got it inside the shop here. I've just got to get it unbolted and unstrapped from the pallet. And I'll be using the uh, overhead, the rolling gantry crane to pick it up off the pallet. And my plan is to set it right here. I did have the Davis key seater here, but I've already moved it around to the other side of the shop. This is a circuit right here. This is a three phase circuit that used to power the KNT mill. I actually have it unhooked from the breaker box. I got to get another breaker for this and wire those wires in and I'll have a circuit. So my plan is just set the Oliver right here and I'm gonna use it right here for now. I would like to have it on the other side of the shop with all the other grinding machines, but this is gonna be a better spot for me right here. I'll come around here and I'll show you. We got the uh, Davis key seater sitting here now and we're gonna be doing some wiring here very soon, hopefully getting all this, all these machines hooked up. I've got the Davis key seater. We're gonna set it right here. It may be moved around just a little bit, but this is the general spot. We gotta wire up a, we gotta bring a circuit over here that's gonna power up this machine, the uh, Kentmore electric press there, and then my big pedestal grinder, the Queen City is directly on the other side of the wall. We're gonna move it over here to this side as well. It's gonna sit right in here. I'm gonna shuffle all the grinders around and try to get everything arranged to where I have a uh, section right through here that's got all the, uh, the grinders. But I did want the, uh, the way that the uh, Oliver is positioned, I wanted it on the other side to where I'd have a little bit more room to work with it. And I think the Davis is gonna be suited uh, pretty good in this uh, general area right here. Just real tight whenever you got a small shop and you gotta get things situated the way uh, it'll work best for you. So we're gonna, we're gonna have that Oliver kind of sitting right here by the door in, uh, in this general area. My attempt to pick it up is using these two holes right here that actually hold the guard of the wheel down. It's uh, two 3 8 holes. I've got two 3 8 eye bolts screwed in there and some shackles. And uh, the threads didn't look all that good in there. But I've got them screwed all the way down. I'm going to see if that'll hold to uh, pick this thing up, get it off the skid. Set her down there and uh, 
I'll probably just use my pry bar and just walk it over against the uh, the, uh, the wall there. Come on, stay there. I just put it on these uh, these one inch hot roll bars there, and I'm just going to use the, that with it, you know, metal on metal, just to kind of slide it back. I tried to put them underneath this area, but the, the motor plate back here actually sticks down below this surface. So I've actually got them out there on the four feet. And we're just, uh, just going to slide it just like this. Working good. Looking good. Touchdown. One of the reasons why I wanted it right here is because of this doorway being opened up all the time. And you got this extension piece that goes in here, right, right in this area here. So I believe this is uh, one of the stops that you use to, you know, put the push the drill up against whenever you're doing re repetition cuts. But uh, so you got a, a tapered pin that goes in here, and I'm just going to drop it in place just like that. All right, and then you can slide this piece, you know, up and down this rail as you need to. And you can adjust this. It looks like a center there, but obviously you don't want it that there all the time. So, but it just gives me a little bit of an opening because of the tighter uh, shop space that I have around here. So I can always just uh, install it whenever I need to, whenever we're doing some cuts. It does come with a couple extra set of jaws right here, and I'm sure these are used. Uh, according to whatever diameter drill bits that you're wanting to grind these right here or uh, The ones that are in there. I'm not really sure yet. Maybe the ones that will hold up to a uh, three inch drill bit Not quite sure, but so those come with it. That's cool. I'm just going to set them in these little pockets right here uh, We got the chuck wrench with it. So I believe it's a complete machine I really don't know much about it other than what you see right here and uh, apparently they're uh, they're still in business, so I've got to look them up and see if I can find maybe some uh, some literature on this thing and start reading in on it and figure out, you know, the, the function of the machine. But the next phase from here is that I need to go ahead and get me another plug to put here, wire up the circuit here on the wall over on the main panel so that we can fire it up and actually see this thing run. And then from there, it's going to be a matter of cleaning it up. I, I would like to... I'm going to just say this, I, I think this would make a nice restoration candidate. I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to get to it, but I think it would look really nice if we at least cleaned it up and put a fresh paint job on it. Uh, at least do that, but I don't know when we're going to do that, but it would be nice to see this happen. But let's get it fired up and uh, actually see the thing running and, and, and learn how to use it. And then from there, we'll see about uh, starting to get the thing tuned up and cleaned up and everything looking good, okay?
I had a customer that's replacing his uh, washing machine shaft right here out of an older unit. So this is the old unit right there. This is the new replacement unit. And uh, the problem that he ran into was that this is the new seal that come in here. And uh, the, the seal journal on that is 37 millimeters, but the OD of this one is 77 and a half millimeter, okay? And the housing that uh, this has got to go in has got to use this seal right here. And this one is, I measured it being 84 millimeter. So he, uh, he brought this to me asking, could I make a sleeve for this? So that's what we did. We made a sleeve to sleeve the smaller journal, which was at 37 millimeter up to 44 and a half millimeter uh, seal journal size. So we've got it, we've got it sleeved now and he does have a new seal on order. So he'll be replacing that. So we got him fixed up and he's ready to roll. I am at the YRC terminal in Mobile on this cold morning. And I have just picked up another cool shipment from Andrew Alexander from Blacksmith Tools. I got this fine big slab of steel. Found this over at a and &E Machine and Gear over in Dallas. Look at this bad boy right here. Micah had, I believe it was like four of these maybe. It was at least four of them. And uh, Andrew and I had made a deal with him on buying all of them. And I wanted one of them for my shop. So Andrew was kind enough to bring them back to his place and ship it over here for me. And I'm just now getting it picked up. So I haven't even measured it yet. It looks like it's a good four inch thick. And I forget what grade it was. I'll have to, I'll have to ask him again. Uh, but I believe it's a tool steel grade or you know something like a chromoly grade of steel. So just something to have. Maybe uh, you never know. We might be able to just make a nice heavy workbench for some vices out of that. So just getting her picked up. It's always a lot cheaper just to have it drop shipped at the terminal. For any of you guys that want to buy and sell equipment or tools or anything heavy, save yourself some money if you just come to here, go, go to the terminal and just pick it up instead of having them drop ship it. So, on our way back to the house, by the way, it's about a thousand pounds. The truck is sitting mighty fine with a thousand pounds in the bed. So, let's take it to the house. Okay, we made it back home, getting ready to unload it. I thought I would go ahead and measure it and uh, see what it actually measured out at. So we're at uh, 10 and 11 sixteenths looks like. So just call it, just call it 10 and three quarter. All right, and then our thickness is five inches. Looks like right at, right at five inches. And let's see what our length is. five foot or 60 inches total length right there. So I asked Andrew what it weighs. He just said a thousand pounds. So we're gonna consider it a thousand pounds, but I've got my, I've got a, a weight scale in there that uh, I might hook up once we get it out here and get it down on the ground and uh, we'll weigh it and see what we get out of our scale. So we're gonna use my magnet right here. Good for a thousand pounds. I'm sure it's got some safety factor involved in there. But as long as you get a good flat surface with a magnet, you should be able to pick it up. So we're just gonna give it a shot. And um, I'm gonna try to get it worked back here further so that I can get it directly in the center of it. And if that'll pick it up, we'll pick it up with that way. And then I'll just drive out from underneath it. top of that right here Got to uh, I gotta lower that set screw right there. 
I had to use that to get it off the plate because the uh, the cam lever slid off the front. drag it back a little bit rock it like that to uh, try to jar it and see if it's going to try to pop off there and it seems like it's going to hold we might just go ahead and walk her back go man there we go that's where it's going to stay for now <clears throat> all right guys there she is it's down here on the ground safe and sound and as far as what i'm going to do with that honestly i can't tell you uh, i have a couple ideas on what i could use it for but it was just a, a really good opportunity to uh, purchase a big thick chunk of steel for uh I mean, really scrap value is what we were able to acquire these for. There was um, several of them over there at uh, A&E, and uh, Andrew and I was visiting, and we talked to them, and, and we both wanted them. So I bought one, and Andrew brought, bought the other ones, and uh, I'm not sure what Andrew's doing with it. I think he sold one of them already, but it's a good, it's a good piece of steel if you want to you know, do some machining, you know, build some kind of parts out of it. So it's definitely uh, good for that you know if, if you got something that requires something big like this you could take it in a bandsaw and just cut off some blocks so just good stuff to have around my other idea was possibly making it into a, a uh, narrow workbench that would be used to hold a couple of big boy vices 
So fabricate some legs, you know, where this thing is up, you know, sitting like a stand would be, and then have a couple of big vices mounted on there. That's kind of what my idea was for uh, making use of it. So anyway, it'll be sitting here waiting for a good project to come along and uh, maybe you enjoyed watching me wrestle this thing off the truck. <laughs>